Mr. Buffett on the stock market. The most celebrated of investors says stocks can't possibly meet the public's expectations. As for the internet, he notes how few people got rich from two other transforming industries, auto and aviation. Fortune magazine. By Warren Buffett and Carol Loomis. November 22, 1999. Warren Buffett, chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, almost never talks publicly about the general level of stock prices neither in his famed annual report, nor at Berkshire's thronged annual meetings, nor in the rare speeches he gives. But in the past few months, on four occasions, Buffett did step up to that subject, laying out his opinions, in ways both analytical and creative, about the long-term future for stocks. Fortune's Carol Loomis heard the last of those talks, given in September to a group of Buffett's friends, of whom she is one, and also watched a videotape of the first speech, given in July at Allen & Company's Sun Valley, Idaho, bash for business leaders. From those extemporaneous talks, the first made with the Dow Jones Industrial Average of 11,194 points, Loomis distilled the following account of what Buffett said. Buffett reviewed it and weighed in with some clarifications. Investors in stocks these days are expecting far too much, and I'm going to explain why. That will inevitably set me to talking about the general stock market, a subject I'm usually unwilling to discuss. But I want to make one thing clear going in. Though I will be talking about the level of the market, I will not be predicting its next moves. At Berkshire we focus almost exclusively on the valuations of individual companies, looking only to a very limited extent at the valuation of the overall market. Even then, valuing the market has nothing to do with where it's going to go next week or next month or next year, a line of thought we never get into. The fact is that markets behave in ways, sometimes for a very long stretch, that are not linked to value. Sooner or later, though, value counts. So what I am going to be saying assuming it's correct will have implications for the long-term results to be realized by American stockholders. Let's start by defining investing. The definition is simple but often forgotten. Investing is laying out money now to get more money back in the future more money in real terms, after taking inflation into account. Now, to get some historical perspective, let's look back at the 34 years before this one and here we are going to see an almost biblical kind of symmetry, in the sense of lean years, and fat years to observe what happened in the stock market. Take, to begin with, the first 17 years of the period, from the end of 1964 through 1981. Here's what took place in that interval. The Dow Jones Industrial Average on December 31, 1964, stood at 874 points. On December 31, 1981, it stood at 875 points. Now I'm known as a long-term investor and a patient guy, but that is not my idea of a big move. And here's a major and very opposite fact. During that same 17 years, the GDP of the US that is, the business being done in this country almost quintupled, rising by 370%. Or, if we look at another measure, the sales of the Fortune 500, a changing mix of companies, of course, more than six doubled. And yet the Dow went exactly nowhere. To understand why that happened, we need first to look at one of the two important variables that affect investment results. Interest rates. These act on financial valuations the way gravity acts on matter. The higher the rate, the greater the downward pull. That's because the rates of return that investors need from any kind of investment are directly tied to the risk-free rate that they can earn from government securities. So if the government rate rises, the prices of all other investments must adjust downward to a level that brings their expected rates of return into line. Conversely, if government interest rates fall, the move pushes the prices of all other investments upward. The basic proposition is this. What an investor should pay today for a dollar to be received tomorrow can only be determined by first looking at the risk-free interest rate. Consequently, every time the risk-free rate moves by one basis point by 0.01% the value of every investment in the country changes. People can't see this easily in the case of bonds, whose value is normally affected only by interest rates. In the case of equities or real estate or farms or whatever, other very important variables are almost always at work, and that means the effect of interest rate changes is usually obscured. Nonetheless, the effect like the invisible pull of gravity is constantly there. In the 1964-81 period, there was a tremendous increase in the rates on long-term government bonds, 